should not blame members when they say where is your god when the sick come back and go back sick when the oppressed come back and go back oppressed when the broken come back and go broken that they have a right according to this scripture to doubt your call are you getting what i'm saying now that it is they have a right to say if you say where two or three are gathered in my name i am there where is he we are more than three here listen i'm challenging you tonight to come into a christian experience that is provable the times that we live in now will no longer allow noise and stories of a god who was and a historic god we need to be able to demonstrate the reality of this life that we so propose we've said so many things about god in conferences in conventions there are so many advocacies about who he is and what he can do and then the world is standing in their arrogance and waiting and saying until you can demonstrate the validity of all you are talking we consider you noisemakers philosophers they say hallelujah in luke chapter 4 the bible says that jesus came to the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him where he wrote the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 jesus speaking that scroll he began to read it before them that the spirit of the lord is upon me he said for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted he said to deliver them that are in bondage he said all those things i'm quoting that scripture and this guy is getting delivered now this one is the power of god this is not a sermon when he was done he said this day is this scripture fulfilled and he saw a woman with a withered hand and said if it is true that i am the messiah that is talked about let that reality be here and now madam stretch forth your hand the bible says that the greeks seek for a sign have you read that scripture that we live in a time where men and women will not just believe for nothing there has to be a dimension of the reality of god there is too much speaking too much speaking not teaching too much speaking propositions of what god can do god can do we wet the appetite of people like the fig tree and we cause them to come and they come there with nothing god is able to change your life we say i'm not being sarcastic god is able to lift you and many times we are well-meaning we don't mean to deceive them we are sincere but we go back and say god but why what is this what is this i gave my best i called for a healing meeting i called the sick to come they waited from morning till night and they went back i called sinners to come i told them there is a savior that can save and while i was teaching what i believe the bible says is the power of god unto salvation that while that teaching is going on the sinners were watching like this unconverted untouched by the message are you blessed we propose that as believers and as men of god he has put something in our lips that when we utter words upon the lives of people we can create a system of blessing upon them but how many times do we continue to speak the lord bless you the lord lift you may your life change they say amen meaning they believe but they don't return with results can i tell you this there has to be a dimension of the grace of god that must be displayed in the land of asaba to bring principalities and powers hear what i tell you there has to be a dimension of the reality of the spirit that you will see people on the streets conversions a, 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 an effulgence of power that on sunday the streets and the shops are closed because men and women will have to go to god there is there is a dimension of the power of the spirit of god he said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech because the morale is not to show you i'm a great orator but to demonstrate to you that there is a kingdom that is provable here and now why should i not go to a harbor list 
when I'm desperate for a solution and you told me that I should stay and go to God and I'm staying to God while my loved one is dying listen we have no right to question the alternatives until we demonstrate the authentic right now it looks like a mockery when you say you are in ministry when you say you are a man of god this is what society interprets i am a nuisance to civilization i am a nuisance to intellectualism i am a nuisance to to sociological development we are this group of religious bigots that have come to interrupt status quo when has it been that the church is said that you are the light of the world that means the definition of darkness is a territory without the church when a man of god comes to a house and knocks and says peace be unto you the people in the house are already offended because in their mind they feel this this money grabbers have come with their false and negative prophecies to mislead us and collect money oh come on please that there is a dimension of grace that as you are knocking at the door of someone without knowing what the problem is the spiritual climate that you carry is announcing something to the realm of the spirit that the age-long captivity that that family is under should go can i tell you this the lifetime of transformation when you see jesus you need only one encounter there were few times in scripture where people had to encounter him twice to be transformed one solid genuine encounter please sit down so the bible says we are called everybody say i am called you are a believer in christ according to the authority of scripture he says you are called it's a holy calling the bible says but then the bible says just proposing that you are called will not bring god glory and that our lives will continue to be barren like the fig tree then he says give us that scripture again first timothy second timothy second peter sorry one and verse ten it says wherefore help us second peter one and verse ten media wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make now women understand this when they say make rice that means take responsibility and bring together the ingredients if i say madam make for me fried rice the first assignment of that woman is to go to the market was that not what he said go and buy from them that sell that means there are people that sell it if, if you are desperate enough there are men who have been custodians of that dimension you seek the parable of the ten virgins he said go the one we have is not enough go to the market there are people who sell it buy from them you don't buy with money you buy with meekness you buy with honor you buy with discernment that you can carry the currency of meekness the currency of honor the currency of discernment to say i discern that you are one of the privileged stewards that has been given this to sell to give to make available so it says make your calling and your election sure man of god make your calling and your election sure believer make your calling that means when this word comes your first assignment is what are the ingredients required to make this ministry potent oh god you called me into a prophetic ministry every prophecy i've given people said is a lie i must go back to the drawing room in the spirit what are the graces what are the dimensions of light i need to form that ministry to make my calling and my election sure you've called me to be a kingdom financier there is a dimension of kingdom wealth i do not know my life continues to represent failure even though i am called so when men doubt your call don't be afraid their 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 doubt should 
push you to go back and say lord these people are justified until my results proves otherwise are we blessed lord you have called me to demonstrate the reality of the spirit to a territory and yet darkness continues to loom across that territory even with my presence that means i need to go back to the drawing board in the spirit with the assignment to make my calling and my election sure don't forget this message tonight is a message that cultures responsibility that waiting for god to just anoint you arbitrarily waiting for prophecy to find its way to happen you will wait forever you have to take responsibility tonight and say in the name of jesus i will find whatever the ingredients are i will pay that price go and buy from them that sell go and buy from them that sell there are stewards who have been given this assignment hallelujah you have malls within your town and when you want to buy household products you don't go to a carpenter for instance when you want to buy food ingredients there are people who sell food and sometimes you are even fortunate they have a place designated already to make it easy for you when you go to ShopRite or any of your malls, they, they even label it for you to make your search easy. That if what you want are beverages and so on and so forth, there is a plethora of them for your choice. That means if your calling and your election is not sure, is accredited to pride, lack of discernment, lack of meekness, and maybe sheer laziness. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of revelation we seek, to represent christ to his fullness is available within the body but it does not come to you you search the proof of passion is pursued that when you are passionate about a dimension and a thing you seek it i believe in the name of jesus that your coming and your sacrifice to sit in and outside is proof that you are tired of your current level and that you desire something that is real and provable to come upon your life i believe that the, the the holy spirit is in partnership with our bishop and the men and women of god within this city to say maranatha let a new dimension of glory come let a new dimension of power come let a new dimension of the investment of the spirit upon this land come come lord jesus come come revival come come signs and wonders come come salvation come come baptisms come come revelation and spiritual intelligence there has to be a people it is the spirit and the bride that says come it is not only the spirit alone the spirit can say come and the bride in asaba is refusing to echo that same word when the spirit says come the bride must also say come the spirit and the bride say come are we blessed so this conference is an attempt to bring to our lives one of the major ingredients that can help a believer make his calling and his election sure now does it does it make sense to you what i'm teaching because just teaching about the anointing arbitrarily is what has produced the immaturity that we see in the body of christ today because people have access to dimensions of grace without purpose they do not even know to what end it is so there, there is a a display and a galore of flesh but when we connect these teachings to kingdom come and to a bigger spiritual cause then you now see that your desiring the anointing has now come under alignment to a greater cause to see christ revealed to see christ glorified more than just making a name the lord i love you so much i want to see your life and your glory lifted and 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 revealed within my territory according to galatians 1 24 that man will glorify god in me and because of that agenda to prove to creation that you are god to be a witness indeed a validator of your power your grace 
it is for that reason that i seek the anointing it is for that reason that i fast it is for that reason that i pray because i love you and i want to see creation give you glory that it will not be in my lifetime that people will say where is this god are we blessed the anointing when jesus began to mentor the disciples isn't it amazing men of god that when you read the gospels you will hardly aside from the recitation of the messianic prophecy you don't hear the mention of the anointing there you don't even hear the mention of spiritual power there are few times jesus talked about that because the major ingredient was to supply spiritual knowledge he knew that introducing them to the anointing would destroy them and so he kept them to mentor them because the anointing reflects your level of spiritual illumination when you get the anointing and your mind is not transformed the the way you will operate will make it look as though it's the anointing making you behave that way and yet it is lack of transformation so the more transformed you are the more you are giving the anointing space to find expression are we blessed the anointing what is the anointing let's define it and then we'll just share a few things thank you jesus mm. <laughs> isaiah 10 27 isaiah 10 27 please give it to us media help us and it shall come to pass in that day someone say this is that day that his burden shall be taken from off your shoulder read with me please and his yoke from off thy neck uh-huh and the yoke shall be destroyed because that when you introduce something to that yoke the yoke will be destroyed the yoke does not get destroyed on its own but there is a spiritual factor that when you introduce to that yoke the bible says the yoke is destroyed and the reason is because of the anointing please write this down the anointing is a system of ordination and authorization the anointing is a spiritual system of ordination and authorization you may want to write the anointing legitimizes your representing god on earth the anointing has nothing to do with oil necessarily the anointing has nothing to do with touching people's head the anointing is a spiritual system that was invented by the intelligence of god as a system of ordination legitimizing your representing him on earth so that all the powers of darkness and indeed creation will respond to you because they know that you are operating on legal grounds you were authorized so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had ordained me he had authorized my operation hallelujah you have i saw a few security people outside when a military man wears his uniform that uniform is a system of authorization is that true it legitimizes him you don't find a military man in his uniform holding a rifle and then you question him because the uniform permits that he holds a rifle but when you just see an ordinary man like that you have to go to the court of law to verify whether that territory allows the use of rifles so when you walk to creation and say seek be healed blind eyes open destinies be transformed believers i supply you light the realm of the spirit will ask you back where is your authorization because as as creation we were designed to obey but not obey everyone we obey people that carry a badge of authorization 
and we see this in jesus we see this in paul but oh sons of skiva where is your authorization so it's not just enough to speak it's not just enough to do ministry the anointing therefore is god's way of legitimizing your operations on earth god's way of legitimizing your representing him are we together yes and the bible tells us theologically speaking that there are two dimensions of the anointing the first according to scripture sorry i'm rushing because i want us to close on time first john chapter 2 and verse 27 it is called the anointing that is within you it says but the anointing which you have received that means you were not born with it you have received of him abided in you and ye need ye need not that any man teach you do you know what that means look up please that there is an anointing you receive that becomes an authorization for the holy spirit to carry out his ministry in your life and build you when you read isaiah 61 is a very interesting rendition that many of us may not have paid attention to it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me so when you read it well you will say because he has anointed me the spirit of the lord has now come upon me are you getting the word now it is not just that the spirit of the lord brought the anointing that there was an authorization that allowed him on legal grounds to come to my life and the bible says that one of those anointings is the anointing within and that the assignment please keep that scripture that the assignment of that anointing is to make sure that you are enlightened spiritually that that anointing is responsible for delivering to you all of the spiritual packages that are responsible for your personal growth this is not the anointing for ministry this is not the anointing for your office it is because of this anointing that you can place a demand and say let scripture be open there is an anointing within you that is responsible for your growth back to the scripture please help us it says that what the anointing teaches you is true so it is an anointing within you that drives you to fast for three days and you are just fasting it is part of your spiritual growth processes there is an anointing within you that compels the holy spirit to drive you to go to church to come for fellowship i was glad when they said to me there is an anointing that causes that gladness are we together but the second dimension of the anointing the investment of god's power that it comes upon you and it is primarily to equip you for kingdom service acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power he says after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power that comes upon you will make you witnesses validators it will make you prove the reality of my existence witnesses unto me in jerusalem please give us acts chapter 1 and verse 8 in judea in samaria it says and unto the uttermost part of the earth that is the anointing that comes upon you and empowers you to represent the purposes of christ as a businessman as a student as a minister of the gospel as a politician one in government it doesn't matter what is the geography of your assignment that when the power and the anointing that is upon you it legitimizes your operation you can represent the purposes of god in its fullness the anointing is responsible for results in the life of a believer please understand this when you find believers that produce uncommon results in their personal spiritual growth and as far as representing the purposes of god are concerned 
that there is an unction there is an anointing from heaven in fact in ancient times you never sent anyone to do any assignment for the kingdom remember again you find it in exodus you find it in leviticus again and again call aaron and call his sons and anoint them every time god found a man to use him he would use the priest or the prophet to anoint that person through the medium of oil that when that oil comes upon that person the spirit of god will come and empower that person to walk in supernatural dimensions and in the name of jesus christ the anointing for your destiny will locate you this night and rest upon your life and turn you into a sign and a wonder now please sit down 